400 AD Rome, squeezing through the Byzantine period, like a tight pair of pants. It's fair to say, Rome in 400 AD wasn't the glowing pinnacle of grandeur that we like to paint in our Hollywood-driven imaginations. Rome during this time was more like a once-great athlete, past their prime, trying to fit into their high school genes, a city on the brink of transformation, teetering between its glorious past and an uncertain future. By 400 AD, the Roman Empire was under new management, the Byzantines. Sure, they kept the Roman name on the letterhead for old times' sake, but the vibe had shifted. The empire was into its transformation phase, like when Facebook became meta, except with more togas and chariots. So, let's talk architecture. The Colosseum was already about 330 years old, an ancient stadium to them but in fairly decent shape, sort of like Cher today. It was still hosting gladiator battles, though not as often, because Christianity was spreading like a viral dance move and made the whole killing-for-sport thing a serious faux pas. Strolling along the Roman Forum, you'd see the vestiges of the Republic era, now playing second fiddle to newer, Christian-influenced buildings popping up. The city was still a hotbed of culture, a mosaic of old world meeting new ideology. Forums weren't just places for political maneuvering now, but also for philosophical and religious debates, sort of like the comment section on a popular blog, but with more marble and less anonymity. But this Rome wasn't just strutting its stuff above ground. Below, catacombs wormed their way under the city, housing the dead in a much more space-efficient manner than the traditional sprawling tombs of the old elite, think urban apartment versus suburban sprawl. And oh, the infrastructure. Roman engineering was still king. Aqueducts were the unsung heroes of the city, bringing in water from the hills like an open faucet of life, which was key because Rome's population was still significant, despite various sacks and setbacks. Plumbing, roads, and monumental construction were part of Rome's legacy. This was a city that had paved the way, quite literally with its roads, for urban planning for centuries to come. Living in Portland, Oregon, a city that is a relative toddler compared to ancient Rome, I can't help but marvel at the time-tested endurance of Roman architecture. On a leisurely stroll through Portland's Pearl District, with its fusion of old warehouses and sleek new developments, the juxtaposition feels like an echo of 400 AD Rome, where the heavy sandstone blocks of the Old Republic met the fresher Byzantine facelifts. To reanimate 400 AD Rome with more than just the stones and columns left behind, it helps to spend a leisurely afternoon in the Portland Art Museum or leaf through a well-illustrated history book. It's as close as we can get to remixing the past into our modern life, far north of Rome's sun-baked cobblestones. So there's your snapshot, an aging Rome, clothes a little out of fashion, trying to rock the new Byzantine trends. It's a transition phase, not as glamorous as its golden history, but just as fascinating.